An injury is not just a process of recovery. It's a process of discovery. This is Lavinia, and we're going to talk about spinal cord injury. This is Abby, a 32 years old male, suffer from spinal cord injury. He was 14 years of bedridden with a lifetime support and a mechanical ventilator. Year 2008, the traumatic incident happened. He was shot on his neck by the unknown gunman during a party, and his spinal cord was affected, specifically on his cervical spine 2 and 3, causing his complete paralysis, or quadriplegia. It is a paralysis of all four limbs, and it's also known as complete tetraplegia. First of all, what is spinal cord? Spinal cord is a thick bundle of nerves that connect the brain to the rest of the body. Spinal nerves are grouped as cervical that compose of C1 to C8, thoracic from T1 to T12, lumbar from L1 to L5, sacral nerves from S1 to S5, and lastly is the coccyx. There are three major functions of spinal cord. Send motor commands from the brain to the body, send sensory information from the body to the brain, and lastly, it coordinates reflexes. Having spinal cord injury can lead to a loss of muscle movement, called paralysis, and a loss of sensation. It also affects the body functioning like urination and breathing, depending on the lesion location and completeness. An ECI above the first thoracic vertebrae, the nerve supply to all four limbs is affected, called quadriplegia, also known as tetraplegia. An ECI below the first thoracic vertebrae, the upper extremities is not affected, called paraplegia. There are two types of spinal cord injury, complete and incomplete. Complete ECI means the entire cord is sufficiently damaged that blocks all neurological signals across the level of injury. Incomplete ECI means that the only part of the cord is damaged and that some neurological functions remains across the level of injury. Most common type of spinal cord injury is incomplete tetraplegia, followed by complete paraplegia, and the third one is complete tetraplegia and incomplete paraplegia. Individuals with SEI should be evaluated by an examiner trained in the American Spinal Injury Association, particularly if they will be referred to an exercise program by using this form. It is International Standard for Neurological Classification of Spinal Cord Injury. According to Spinal Cord Injury Canada, the Physical Activity Guidelines for Adults with Spinal Cord Injury, they categorize into two, starting level and advanced level. In starting level, the aerobic activity requires 20 minutes, two times a week of moderate to vigorous intensity, and strength training activity, three set 10 reps two times a week for each major muscle group in advanced level the aerobic activity 13 minutes three times a week of moderate to vigorous intensity and the strength training activity three set 10 reps two times a week for each major muscle group the starting level is the minimum level of activity needed to achieve fitness benefits the advanced level will give you additional fitness and health benefits such as lowering your risk of developing type 2 diabetes and heart disease. The aerobic activities are physical activities that are done continuously and that increase your heart rate and breathing rate, such as wheeling, swimming, hand cycling, or dancing. Strength training activities are activities that increase your muscle strength such as exercising using resistance bands or lifting weights. Moderate intensity activities require you to work somewhat hard, but you should feel like you can keep going for a long time. Vigorous intensity activities require you to work really hard and you can only continue them for a short time before getting tired. For a lighter intensity, you can use the basic CDD4 recommendations for physical activity or exercise in chronic conditions depending on the severity of the injury.